Hello everybody, my name is Katie. Welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I am doing the PGY1 pharmacy residency forecast tips and advice. That is a mouthful. But basically I'm gonna be talking about application um, tips, what helped me uh, kind of go through that. Um, but first off, um, I wanted to introduce myself a little bit. So I am a pharmacist. I'm a PGY1 resident currently. I graduated from University of the Pacific in Stockton, California in 2024, May 2024. Um, and forecasts, the residency application portal has just opened five days ago at the time of uploading this video. So it's time to begin putting together your residency application and thinking about where you want to apply, which is very, very exciting. It's a very exciting time. Um, so I'll go ahead and put like a link to the full schedule of dates for the ASHP 2025 match in the description box below. I highly recommend checking this out in order to start getting like your timeline all figured out and seeing like what needs to be done about when things will happen. And on the screen here, you will see the topics that I'm going to talk about, plus the timestamps for each. So you can skip to see whatever you're most interested in, but I do recommend watching the whole video. Um, it might help you out. So the first section here is going to be how to use forecasts. And I'm going to go ahead and cut to the portion of the video where I do a little screen recording and walk you through that. Okay. Hello everybody. So welcome to the, um, how do I use forecasts portion of this video? So this is what forecast looks like at least right now. It, it could update and change. Cause I know there was one semi recently. I think it was in 2020, 2023. I don't know, it was really recent. Um, so hopefully there's not gonna be one that's anytime soon. But anyways, this is what the page looks like um, exactly when you log in. So we're on the home tab here, the dashboard. And so if you just look at the application portion, we have our like personal information here, and then we have our academic history, the supporting information, and then program materials. I'm gonna have to blur that out. Um, so obviously, all my stuff in here is like not done. Um, that's why there's these like exclamation points. Don't worry about that. This is just me showing you generally the layout and what to expect. Basically, you're just gonna fill out all of these things and that's pretty much it. It's, it's pretty self-explanatory actually filling out these things. So then looking at the personal information here. Oh, sorry, that's that. That's academic history, the supporting information. That's all the stuff that we saw. Program materials here, same thing. Um, and then this is academic records. So this is where you're gonna like order your official transcripts and everything. Um, this is also fairly self-explanatory. You should get instructions from your school. I got instructions from mine, but it's fairly simple. You just order the transcript and send it to forecast and then they'll receive it. Okay, this is the fun part. This is where you're going to add all of your programs. So you can filter what comes up. So say, I only wanna look at available programs right now and say like, I only wanna do like a certain state. Like I only wanna do, I don't know, the first one on the list. I only want to do Alaska. So I would look at here and see like, oh, these are the programs that are available in Alaska. Okay, so that's pretty much it. And then if you just like click this plus button, it adds the program to your list of programs. You can, you don't even have to like filter by state. You could also filter by city. If you wanna be like super specific, you say, hey, I'm from Abington. I think that's how you say it. Um, but this is where I'm from. I would ideally like one here and this is the only one that's there um but you can filter now i wouldn't be too restrictive with where you apply just because it's gonna be harder to get a residency that way but it's nice that these filters are here so you can kind of just select like oh i want to be in these states and kind of like see the different options that are available this part here notifications this will show you like important things so basically whenever you get a letter of recommendation writer to write your stuff you'll get a notification saying like oh this person like submitted it so you know that they're done so this is just any like important notifications that's where you'll find them this is just your account um it's pretty self-explanatory what that all is now if i were to go to like a specific program i guess i'll just go to the one that i have here so if you look at like details 
right? Um, this is going to be a lot of editing for me and a lot of work. Um, but basically, this just shows like all of the stuff here. Um, if you go to documents, this is like showing, oh, this is the stuff that I need to submit. So I need to submit my CV. I need to submit my personal statement and then supplemental um, materials. It's like, well, zero required. Well, that's that's standard for every single program. Uh, you actually have to look at the program itself, like look at their website and see if there's actually things that you need to do um, because this is where you'll submit it. Even though it says zero required, that may not be true for that program. So please double, 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 triple check that. And then undergraduate uh, transcripts. If like a program requires you to submit it, um, then you're gonna submit it here. Obviously, zero required, but it's like that for every program. So just double check things. You can also see like academic records here and see like if they have it, like if they, if it's required, ordered, received, that's all that. And then program evaluations here as well. So you can see how many requested, how many were accepted and how many were completed. I feel like that pretty much overall sums up the forecast. It's generally not that difficult to use. Um, I will say like this, this information stuff here with like your achievements and experiences is going to be a lot of work, but it'll be okay. It's not hard work. Um, but yeah, hopefully that helps with kind of like orienting you to like what forecast looks like and kind of how to put things in. I guess I can, let's look, let's look at like in my achievements. <laughs> okay, so for example on, this is gonna be the exact same for, um, what's it called? Experiences as well. So I'm just gonna click on this. Um, so basically on the achievements, you're gonna say the type. Um, there's a drop down menu here, the name, when it was, and then kind of like a brief description of what the achievement was, if that makes sense. Um, so different types of like things are scholarships, presentations, awards, and publications. So that's kind of the stuff that you're going to put under this section. And then same thing for experiences. It's just going to put, or it's just going to be the same thing, but it's going to be like experience type. So pharmacy work experience, leadership experience, internship, or volunteer. And then you just put in all the information as said here. And the last thing is down here. So yeah, that pretty much sums it up. I think that's literally everything. Hopefully that's helpful. Um, let's go ahead and move on to the next section now. Okay, and so now moving on to general advice. So I would recommend checking the box that allows programs to add or that allows programs that you add to your list to see your name before submitting your application. Because if deadlines are something important changes, this is how they'll be able to notify you. And plus it might even get your name out there and it shows that you're interested in applying to their program. Um, another tip is put everything that's on your CV into the forecast system. I know it may seem redundant because you're like, I'm uploading my CV. Like, why do I need to put all of my achievements and experiences into forecasts. And the reason why is because that's how the system is gonna give you quote unquote points for your experiences and achievements. So some programs do use a point system to determine how qualified you are as an applicant for their program. So it is in your best interest to fill it out to the best of your ability and um, to the best of your knowledge so that you are able to get the maximum amount of points and potentially get an interview. Next tip is that I would recommend making like a document or a checklist of all the programs that you're applying to and then also their application deadlines and also components, if that makes sense. Uh, this helped me stay organized and it made sure that I completed everything for each program on time. On forecast, there will be a section for supplemental uploads like I previously shown in the previous section, but they will not tell you what to upload. So that's why I made this document of everything that I need to do. That way it's all in one place. I don't have to keep referencing every residency programs like website. I just can reference my document if I had questions and I forgot what I need to do. But 
yeah that's pretty much that tip the final tip for general advice that I'd recommend is to create a folder on your computer with all of your documents and supplementals. So in that folder, I basically had like subfolders for each program that I applied to. And then each folder had each of my program's materials, if that makes sense. So I had a couple of folders and folders, but that really helped me to stay organized. Uh, just make sure you title all of your documents with the correct program name like i put down the program's name in each of my uh documents because the worst thing you can do is submit like your program stuff to the wrong program that is the <laughs> worst thing you could do it's like an automatic rejection uh so don't do that and stay organized the next section that i have is letters of recommendations so it's November by the time this is coming out. If you haven't already asked your references for a letter of recommendation, recommendation I can't English, um, do that ASAP. Um, it's important to give them enough time to write you a good letter so that it's not rushed. And they're probably gonna have a bunch of other like students who are going to ask them for letters as well. So the earlier you can ask your writers, the better it is for you and for them. When determining who to ask, um, get where you did well in a rotation and like one that al aligns with your interests and the program itself. So for examples, like I got letters from my ambulatory care rotation, hospital practice rotation, inpatient pediatrics rotation, and my research professor. Now, um, most programs only need three letters. However, you can upload up to four. Now, I wouldn't really recommend doing that, even though you can. Uh, most oftentimes, programs get like a bunch of applicants and they don't want to go through more application materials than they have to. So I would recommend, this is one of the instances I would recommend submitting like kind of like the bare minimum. Like if, if it allows for references, please do three. And even some of the programs say like three references. So I just submitted three across the board. Um, I got four and I would recommend maybe getting four um, because number one, you can kind of pick and choose which letters why you want to go to which program. But number two, in case something happens and one of them is not able to get anything done, you won't be scrambling to try to get a third letter. And once asking um, your writers, make sure you ask if they can write you a strong and positive letter of recommendation for residency. If they seem hesitant or say no, do not use them as your letter writer. I cannot emphasize how important letters of recommendations are. Like, I cannot stress that enough. Um, that's why it's so important to ask for a strong and positive letter because yeah, they can write you a letter. Like, they'll be like, yeah, I can write you a letter. If you just ask for a letter, they can write you a letter. May not be a good letter. So that's why you need to stress those important words. So they're very important because if your application is like perfect, and you don't have strong letters, you're probably not gonna get an interview there. These letters are like the residency program's only insight into how you work. Um, they're basically taking the word of your rotation preceptors because you're contracted for a year. So that's something that's really important to them and they don't wanna take any chances. So I cannot stress that enough, it's so important. The next section is about submitting your apps. So before you hit that submit button, triple check that everything is added to the correct program. Make sure you add your supplemental documents if the program requires it, because it will not remind you. There's no asterisk because it's not a required item for all programs. So kind of like I was mentioning earlier, it's up to you to realize which programs have supplementals and make sure that they are submitted. So as for submitting your apps, you can submit either one at a time, all at once, or any amount in between. Some people may stagger submissions depending on the due date, but personally for me, I just went ahead and submitted all of my applications at the same time. Um, I would recommend submitting them as soon as you deem them to be finished because the earlier you submit them, the better it looks on your part. If you wait until the last minute or even the last day to submit, it may look like you're a procrastinator because they can see like when you submit programs or when you submit applications. Um, 
and a procrastinator is not really the first impression that you want to give. Um, so I made an effort to get my applications done before the holidays so that I could just spend time with my family without worrying about completing them and just knowing like I did the best I could, whatever happens and whatever interviews I get, it was that's what was meant to be. Um, and it was nice to just kind of have that off of my chest when I was celebrating the holidays. So I would recommend doing that as well. My next section is going to be talking about pricing. It does get very expensive. Um, the first four programs cost $110. And every additional program costs an additional $43. So you can imagine how um, that's already like, it, it just it just goes up really quickly. Now the ma national matching services fee, it's uh, $160 and that's required for you to participate in the match. So as I mentioned, things get out of pretty quickly. So it's very important to be strategic in deciding which programs to apply for. I've heard that people generally apply to about 10 programs, give or take a few. I did apply to 13 in phase one. So I applied to 13. It doesn't really matter. You apply to, you just apply to how many you feel comfortable with. But most people do around 10 ish. Um, you can, if you, if you end up getting like too many interviews, you can like deny interviews. Um, it just depends. So I wouldn't be super overly stressed about having like too many programs and then getting too many interviews because you can prioritize them after. But then again, it's kind of like you used all that money to apply. So you just got to be strategic. Just be strategic with where you apply. And the final section that I want to talk about is how the match works, because I know this can be kind of a confusing topic. It's, it's, it's confusing how it works. So I wanted to kind of walk through it, provide a few examples, and maybe it'll help to understand like a little bit better. So basically what happens, which I'm sure you're familiar with, is that you're gonna rank your programs that you interview with, and the programs are gonna rank the applicants that they interview with. So ASHP then matches the candidate with the program based off of these rankings. So matches in the favor of the candidate, Meaning that if two programs rank you as your number one, as their number one candidate, then you will go to your first choice. So let me give you like a more complex example to help you understand this concept because I know it can be a little tricky. So for example, program A matched with red and orange and there is only two spots at that program. So unfortunately you didn't get the spot. But now for simplicity, I've made program B have one spot. Generally though, speaking PGY ones will have multiple residents, but it's just a simplistic example. So as you can see, program B ranked blue as their first choice. However, blue either matched at a higher ranked spot for them, or they didn't rank program B for whatever reason. We don't know why, but they just didn't rank them. So now it goes down to you and you would then match with program B. So hopefully that makes a little bit more sense as to how the matching process works. I know it can be confusing, but that's pretty much all that I have for um, this video on my tips and tricks for residency applications. It can be a stressful time. Um, if you're watching this video and it's November, that's already a good start. I know it's very daunting, but um, it's good to get started as soon as you can because um, it is quite an intensive process and um, it'll be okay though. You'll get through it and hopefully land a good PGY1 out of it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. And I do plan on doing like a residency interview, um, like tips and tricks and advice video in the future so if that's something that interests you make sure to hit that subscribe button click the notification bell but i do post videos every single sunday and i'll see you back again next week for another video bye